Hi guys, this is Tech Howdy. I welcome you to another video tutorial on creating an ASP.NET Core application with Angular 7. In the last video tutorial, we completed coding our registration method that is required to register new users using our registration form. Now, in order to get the values from our form controls, that is from our UI elements, into this component.ts, we need to make sure that we add these appropriate angular tags or attributes inside these elements so that we can create some binding to access these values. So let's start adding the validation to each elements that we have to each form controls that we have inside this form. So we have created some validators here for username, password, confirm password, email. And we want to use these validators now in on our elements or input tags that we created. So the first thing that we want to do is go ahead and create a div inside the form control group or the form group. Now for the div, we will use our if condition, that's the angular if condition, and the way we do it is using a star sign and ng if. Now here we will specify some conditions that need to be verified in order for us to make sure that the form control or the value inside the form control is valid. So the first thing that we want to do is use the form control name username and then dot the property touched that means that the focus is on the form control and so the user has basically clicked on the username field once it is touched the validation will start validating for any errors so what we would do here we'll make sure we satisfy two conditions which is firstly that the username is touched and secondly the username has any errors so if the username is touched and username has any errors then we are going to display the errors inside some span tags so what are the errors that we are looking for Inside the validators, we are looking for firstly that they, the field is not blank. That means there is something entered by the user because it is required. Secondly, the length of characters that is entered, the max length. And thirdly, the minimum length of the characters. So we will have three validation messages there. So we will put them inside a span tag and we will say if username has error, of required which is our validator then we will display the message username is required then if username has error the max length error then we will say oh only 10 characters and similarly if we have the error related to minimum length then we will display a message which is at least five characters needed for the username you can add your own custom message here inside these bank tags also since I want to display them the text red I will give it a class of error message so we have not yet added this uh, style inside our style sheet which is the global style sheet let's go ahead and add this put it somewhere at the bottom that should be fine since it's related to register I'll just put it here save so I'm just going to display the text in red so we know it's an error once again you can use your own colors combinations that you want and yes so let's go back to our component.html and that's how we are going to add the validations for our uh, username and now let's add the validation for our password so i have added the validation for a password it's going to be almost the same validations that we are using the required the max length and the minimum length now let's add the validation to our confirm password and as we know in our confirm password we have created a custom validator that is going to validate the value of the password field with the confirm password field 
So to add that validator, let's go ahead and add it. So I've added the validator for our custom password field. And as you see, it's almost the same other than we are not going to have the max length or minimum length validations because all we want to check is this value inside the confirm password field matches the password field. So we are going to call our must match validator. And if it has error, then we're going to display password must match. That's it. Everything else will be handled by this validation method here. Now let's finally add the validation messages for our email field. So I've added the validation for our email field. Once again, our email field doesn't have any max length, minimum length. An email field is an type of email field. So let's go ahead and add that. So we will check if the value entered is an email. If it's not entered, then it's required. And please provide a valid email. If it's not a valid email, because our Angular validator is going to validate for the email that is entered. So let's go ahead and then make sure that we add this email validator here because we have not yet added it so i'm just going to add this here so validators dot and we want the email validator okay so that should be it so i have added the email validator now in case if this value that is entered is not a proper email not a valid email it's going to throw an error so now we have created these validators. Next thing that we want to do on our form is if there are errors present inside our form, any validation errors or any errors, we don't want to make this button available to the users. Means we will keep it grayed out so that it cannot be clicked. And for that, we are going to use the disabled attribute. So disabled is equal to we are going to say insert form which is the name of our form that we created in our form group so we will say insert form dot if insert form is invalid then this registration button which is our submit button will be disabled okay so now that should be it and let's go ahead check this on our browser to make sure that the validations appear appropriately so let's save this file make sure you save it and then you go to your front end and now if i touch or if i focus my mouse on this field here i get username is required and if i just enter two characters it says oh at least five characters needed in username so i say this but if i go more than 10 characters it says only 10 characters allow so you see how reactive form modules work and now if you go to password then go to confirm password but it says only 10 characters allowed so let me add one two three four five six seven eight nine ten should allow me so i'm going to try to enter a different password here so as soon as i enter the first character it says password must match so let me just add something else yeah it says confirm password is required so let's add the same password one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and as you see the validation error is gone we also add this and here and for the email i can say anything but it says yeah, i need a valid email so i say add gmail so it works we know and this button is now available for us if there are any errors we cannot click this button it's grayed out so that should be it for this video tutorial. We have successfully implemented validation in our user registration form. In the next video tutorial, we will test our registration as well as our login method inside the application using the UI that we have created. 
So thank you once again for watching this video tutorial. Please like and subscribe my channel Daikhauri.